You're listening to the Crew Book Club podcast, the show that challenged you to change your mindset through hearing about dope books. Thanks for hanging with the crew to get advice, ask questions, and gain knowledge with me, your host, Shade Hill. What up, crew? What's good? This is a special episode of the Crew Book Club podcast. It's special all around, not because it's a bonus episode, but because we have a special guest here with us today. It's our first author. And I just have to say a little bit about this author. She, I don't really think she know how she, how she touched me in such a way, but she's a broadcaster, media manager, a producer, virtual assistant, and a podcast host of Regina Kids Podcast, and the author of two books called one, the first one is All My Broken Crayons Still Color, so Daily Affirmations for Healing the Soul, and her second book is Love You More, Grieving Isn't Easy, and Healing Hurts. And she sent me both of these books. So I am glad to announce she is also part of the crew. Our first author, our first guest, Maxie E. Norman. Welcome to the show. Hey, Shade. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) I am so excited. How are you feeling? Um, (laughs) I'm excited. I don't know. (laughs) Good. No, you do know day, you are right? excited. It is a good day. And yeah. I think I said it. What up, crew? Was good. We know how Maxi is feeling. It's a good day for her. Yeah, it's a good day. It's a good day for me as well. <laughs> and I am super excited to get into this. Now, before we even get started, I told them a little bit about you, but how would you describe yourself to a stranger? Um I used to describe myself as the nicest mean girl you'll ever meet because people just automatically assume that I'm mean, but um, it's kind of my defense mechanism. Like, I just got to observe people and get a feel for you first. But um, to a stranger, I'm probably like a person who kind tries to make your dreams come true. Like anybody I work with, I try to make their vision come to life. So... That's awesome. (laughs) I love that. And for you to, I'm happy you changed how you described yourself as the nicest mean girl, because you sent me both books. And I think we met through Carla, the podcast coach. Yeah. Are you part of like the society? The society and things (laughs) of that nature. Okay. So when I received the inbox about the book, I was just like, oh my God, it's like my first real merchandise (laughs) of like crew love. And I was just like, and she's actually the author. So it was all my broken crayons still color. So Maxi, tell us where did the inspiration of the title, all my broken crayons still color come from? I used to love to color. And I realized that like, I had read something like, just because you could be broken, God can still use you. And I'm mm. like, oh, oh, well, and then I seen it. And then right after that, I had seen somebody with a tattoo of a broken crayon. Like it was a broken crayon and it was like at the bottom of it, it was like, it's still colored. I was like, okay, that's it. That, that's going to be it. Wow. That, that, was me. that is amazing. Like, yeah. I love that. Cause when I saw the crayons, I was just like, Oh my God, that's right. Like, even though I might be going through all the mess, yep. <laughs> every life, the grieving of it all, like I can still make art. And you could just tell I love this type of stuff. And I have to say, my <laughs> favorite affirmation out of the whole book was, is compete on the highest level only against yourself. And it says, I will always work on me. Being selfish is not the same as putting you first. You will never be able to overachieve when you're not good. Put the same efforts into yourself that you put into others. Simply put, love you more. And it's just so funny. Like that was the title of your next book. And one of the reasons why I relate to this so much, because I'm always an advocate of when people call me selfish, it's like, am I selfish because I'm not doing what you want me to do and I'm putting me first. So can you remember where you were at when you wrote this affirmation? Um, I was trying to 
be selfish because I'm one of those people I I'll, I'll give and give and give until their my cup is completely empty and I feel like I wasn't able to I I had sat with that book for so long I'm like you're never gonna get it done if you don't be selfish and work on the stuff that you need to work on for you so that's where I was at when I was writing that so yeah it makes perfect <laughs> sense I mean that's how I was that's the podcast for me. I was just like, I'd be doing everything for everybody else when it comes to real estate, being a mom and all those things. And I was just like, I'm gonna just cut the time out and do the things that I like. And I'm gonna be selfish for me for once. (laughs) So that's really, really dope. Um, Do you remember the first time or the moment that you were motivated to become an author? I never um, thought I was going to be an author. I had, um, so I still, on top of everything else, I still work a corporate job too for I don't know how long. I, I When I started that job, I said six years in now, I'm like, this is going to be my last corporate job. I'm not doing no more corporate jobs. And at a time we were able to like watch TV and all that stuff at work. And then they changed it. And it was like, right on time to like listening to podcasts and um I would listen to Eric Thomas all the time and listen to him like you need to get up at 3 30 I'm like I already get up at five it's a little (laughs) rough (laughs) but I would um I would just simply be like hearing stuff or listening to podcasts and something was sparkling I would just write it down and um my dad ended up passing and I ended up having like notebooks like just full of stuff and I was trying to figure out how to deal with everything that happened yeah. um with him passing so it just kind of turned into a book and I was just like oh wow you didn't sit here and wrote like all of this stuff to bring yourself out of that so wow it kind of just turned into a book that's so funny how things happen like that <laughs> like yeah. and I want to stop saying funny it's like so purposeful when things happen to push us into those, but I'm happy you yeah. <laughs> use that energy of grief to catapult you into writing this. So we're going to focus on the love you more grieving isn't easing and healing hurts because a little backstory, <laughs> the day I don't check my mail. I think you mailed it for a while and I just never yeah. checked the mail And this particular day I checked him out and it was literally the day after I had a miscarriage. Oh, wow. Yeah. So when I opened the box, I'm trying not to cry. When I opened the box and I saw that, I was just like, oh, my God, it wasn't meant for me to check the mail no other day because it probably wouldn't have hit or resonated the same because it was my first time that a doctor explained to me that a miscarriage can be grieving. Yeah, I've had two in the past and this was the first, and this is side note. This is why I say black women deserve black doctors in the, these type of situations because she could relate to me being so strong and da, 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 da. And you probably kept it moving all those other times. Exactly. This time it just hit different. It hit different and she recognized that. And so and she's another black woman. So she she understood the burden that us as black women carry. So when I got the book, I was just like, I just started bawling. And then you sent the teacup with the healing. And I was just like, (laughs) oh, my God, like God knows exactly when you should do something like he told you to send it. And then he told me exactly when to open it. And so it was just like, I was like, I don't even think she knew what she did. And then the note. I I didn't because what happened is um, that book. Oh, my God. So. I lost a lot of people like in the book, it's only six people, but in the five years since my dad passed, it was maybe like seven or eight people. And then last year um, I lost one of my really, really somebody that was really special to me on my dad's birthday and in two I wrote that book in two weeks like God would not pour the whole book into me and I couldn't sleep I couldn't eat I couldn't do anything I just had to write that book and I had to get it all out and after I wrote it 
it was like the first book I found an editor they edited it it was great she sent it back I met all the deadlines this book it just kept getting pushed back like the person that I had edited the book she she was like yeah okay it's fine whatever you know I'll do it whatever and then she had to call me and she like Maxie I'm not trying to delay your book coming out but I didn't think that it was going to affect me like that and I'm like well, you just said, because she kept telling me, well, I'm just free. She's like, I was like, well, did you read it? Like, what do you think? Yeah. Like, because these are my babies. Like, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I get nervous when I send my book out. Yeah. And I actually only sent it to you. So I'm like, I love her podcast. It's always talking about books. So she loved books. I could just send her some books. I was like, well, maybe she'll read it and she'll just give me a review. <laughs> and the editor called me back and she was like, Maxie, I normally edit books and I don't really read them. I just, you know, edit the book and keep it moving. She was like, but midway through your book, I'm like, she was like, I couldn't stop crying. I'm like, well, what's wrong? <laughs> like, yeah. My brother passed away 10 years ago and wow. I never sat with that and got it out and figured it out. And it was, and she was like, I feel so bad. I said, it's nothing I could do about it. Like, I don't feel, I'm not mad at you. I said, yeah. It's meant to happen the way it was supposed to happen. Yeah, it's so it that was the point of the book. It was supposed to happen. I'm sorry, I have oh. to say this because I have a nervous laugh, and I have a, like when something hits me, it's wild. So we're talking about grieving, and I'm laughing, not laughing at you or the situation, right. but it's just like, oh my god, like because I got that same feeling by reading the book, and so and I, I'm like, it's so relatable. And I told people like in writing the book, I was like grief is not just about like losing people like people mm -hmm. always associated with somebody that passed away I'm like people grieve friendships they re grieve relationships mm -hmm. they just don't have a word to put to it like a lot of the things when I started doing research on like the five stages of grief I was like people feel these things all the time like mm -hmm. you know, all of this all the time so it's not just grief of losing someone is grief of like everything like anything you lost like anything that was close to you that you felt like this is mattered set like yeah so it just wasn't for the loss of someone so yeah because talking about those five stages of grief which in the book it says denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance and that's where it hit me I was like I deal with these things regularly and especially in, in the moment of a miscarriage. It was like I was denying what was happening and then I was angry mm -hmm. about it. <laughs> but then I kind of got, you know, I'm bargaining with God like why and da 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 da. And then the depression kind of sets in and then you get to the point. It's like, OK, I got to accept it. I got to accept it. For me to be able to move forward, I got to accept what is. Right. And so, yeah, <laughs> just the first, yeah. I'm just like, I don't share my business. <laughs> Not seeing my business. All the stories are great. There are six stories in there, but I really, I was going to dive into Nika, your dad and Stormy. Okay. And I feel like that's like covers friend, family. And I feel like love of life. <laughs> right in something. a sense something yeah. like that and so when I read Nika's story she I feel like she reminded so much of me like how she was is <laughs> you had it here she said if you had the privilege of meeting I'm saying her name right is it Nika mm -hmm. yes Nika yes. and didn't like her you were just being a hater yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean like Nika I understand <laughs> Be, and I feel like if you never meet somebody you just look at them and perception and everything it's like that person always nice there's nothing you can say bad and about she that person was, she was that person like I never I've seen her go through stuff and still not be mean to people and I'm just like yeah God gave you a different type of heart because a different type cannot, of patience I cannot it was it, she was so nice it was that she has a um she has a younger sister that I'm still close to to this day. And her sister would, even though Nika would let it go and she wouldn't argue with the people, her sister would back around and say, you know what? <laughs> I'll fight you. She don't fight, but I fight. I'm like, 
you can't beat up people that she not mad at. I just don't like the way they did that. Like, yeah. She was just that nice. nice. Like, yeah, she was just one of those people. Like, she was just, she'd do anything for anybody. Like, anybody. People she just met in five minutes, she would do stuff for. I was just like, girl. <laughs> like, can't yeah, be doing God, that. God gave you a different, like, <laughs> he, he totally gave you a different type of heart. To That's- be that kind to Every Everybody. single person, no matter what, no matter what, no, even maybe with her we- own things that she was going through, like you would never even know. The people used to see, like, she don't never go through nothing. I'm like, what are you talking Talk about? about? You she, don't know her, <laughs> right? You, you don't know her. You haven't. She just, to her. she's just not one of them people to hold on to it. Like her faith was really strong, and she was just happy. I love that. When I was reading, that, I feel like the way you. um described her I was like I could I I felt the energy and then you had to hear you said I really couldn't understand it I hated customer service sitting on the phone all day was for the birds and it made me think like time times we may be in situations that makes no sense but I felt like your purpose of being in that situation was because of her to learn from her it had to be because we were in a shared (laughs) cubicle and I would sit there all day like why am I here like why am I here it, it, it was horrible to me I'm like I'm like this manager don't like me she comes stand in between us she don't even talk to me I'm like what am I doing here and I feel like that was think of purpose and I feel like you what knew that doing? when you wrote sometimes all you need is someone to change the way you view life it had to be because that didn't work for me <laughs> That didn't work for me. Um, I also like how you wrote on her story. It says, we were making all types of plans, but sometimes your plans are not in God's plans. And a lot of time things put off until tomorrow never happen because tomorrow may never come. Yeah. Do you run that back? Does that keep you? All, all the time. <laughs> all the time. Because yeah. when we came up with doing event planning, it wasn't even a, it wasn't a thing. It wasn't one of those things that people even talked about doing. And then when we tried to circle it back, it was at the time where that's all you see now. All you see yeah. is outrageous baby showers and birthday parties for kids yes. that cost like five, $600. Like I have a five-year-old nephew and I had to tell my niece, like, you tripping if you think that the type of party he finna get is one of them that you've seen on Instagram that's like three thousand dollars <laughs> and he don't care about none of these people that's coming no I'm not gonna be able to do it I'm just not I like I don't understand five thousand dollars for a kid's party that's too much the, I can't yeah. <laughs> we, we can get him uh investments something stocks, like not for that <laughs> you spend over a thousand dollars on balloons no <laughs> what happened to just pizza ice cream and cake <laughs> the simple parties you invite the pe- you invite a few people over okay y'all sing happy birthday y'all get some chips some hot dogs turn some music on and then it turns into the adult party right after yeah, they have them full <laughs> like <laughs> Boy, it's like a wedding. I mean, like, what is this? No, I completely understand. Yeah, but no. I'm happy you met Nika and had that experience yeah. with her. And I absolutely loved her story. And another thing, I liked how you put their pictures in the book. And I felt like that was so honorable to yeah. honor them in that moment. I had so. to, I I had, I reached out to, well, outside of my grandmother and my dad, because I can do whatever I want to do with their pictures, but um, everybody else in the book, I reached out to the person that was closest to them and asked, could I put their picture yeah. in the book? Because I wanted to honor them in a special way. Like I wanted people to read about them and get to know them and then actually like, oh, okay, see there's them. a picture. Like I want to meet Yeah, because I would like, I, I want, want to, to see what they, the yeah. At the end, so. It was very beautiful. I love that. So hopping into your dad and I want to <laughs> tap into, into his story. And before his, uh, his title is when you're getting, ain't getting and you're gotten is gone. Is that something he Yeah, said, that's something he, he said. Yeah. <laughs> what is, explain what he means when he say that well actually he would say that to my mom they would have like a back and forth uh-huh. and she would get mad and he'd be like well don't be mad at me because your getting ain't getting and your gotten is gone I'm like, what <laughs> your is gone. 
I was, I read it a few times. <laughs> it's like your getting ain't getting no more, and your guidance is gone. gone. Right. I absolutely love the title, and it says you went years without talking to him. What was it that brought you back around to talking to your dad? Um going to church and getting my own healing and getting an understanding that sometimes your parents, well, actually just knowing that your parents are just human people. And if you don't know their experiences and their stories, you don't know why they act the way that they do or why they can't give you what you feel like you need Mm -hmm. from them. Sometimes they just, they're just not capable of giving you something that they never had. Yeah. I relate to that because I don't had to cut both of my parents off for periods of time out of boundaries too i felt like they forget when we're adults and they don't know how to cut that parent boundary off yeah it's like wait a minute hold on i'm I'm over 30 wait a minute i pay all my bills i'm not asking you for nothing i asked for that (laughs) so respect 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 because i feel like there's a certain time where that child parent authority thing has to separate and you have to become my friend yeah you know what I'm saying so I'm happy you and your dad reconciled and you were able to have that experience with him before and it really made me evaluate like okay and my therapist been telling me but (laughs) when reading it and you're dealing with actual death knowing like he can't come back to re- resurrect yeah. that relationship. I was just like, okay, I, I'm going to let my dad and his wife be them and my mama be them and that it is what it is. Yeah, I can only... I know, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, because I know lots of people who like that... <laughs> that was it for me. I'm not, I'm not going back. Mm-hmm. And I, and I just clearly tell them like, as long as you can be okay. Cause for me, it wasn't like, Oh, I need him to, you know, fix stuff and do this and all that. Yeah. He live close to me. It was that if something was to happen, I'm, I'm not, I wasn't going to be okay. Yeah. So I needed to fix it so I could be okay. That part. Yeah. I think it was just like, I accept what, who you are as a person and as a parent, and I have no direct connection to your healing. The only thing I can do is set the boundary with you and hope you respect it. Yeah. And if you don't, then that just, the evaluation of how I need you and want you in my life, but I don't want you completely out of my life. Right. So love the story with um, you and your dad. You guys have to get this book. And I, and I know people are like, oh, she said that about every book. <laughs> but I do try to get books like this that puts us in perspective. Talk about Stormy really quick. And there was a part of here where you said all that blocking my mama tried to do didn't work because we ended up dating anyway. I yeah. like, that's always. <laughs> yeah. um, so- she was she big on just not. It, it, she don't care. If you young, don't date. Don't date. If you do date, don't date one person. Date a lot of people. I said, it's only because you got married to my dad at 16. Like, if you didn't do that, you wouldn't feel like that. She was like, yeah. I just know. I just know how young love is. It doesn't work. I'm <laughs> like, that's your 16-year-old self talking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and the affirmation that you had was, I will not miss an opportunity to tell the people in my life that I love them. I will not take the people I love for granted. And I will love unconditionally. And I think that I will not take the people I love for granted Cause you and Stormy didn't have a, um, you guys had a committed relationship and then it was like this back and forth of, I don't know type of thing. Have, have you learned from that? So like the next time love does come around, it's like, I'm taking full advantage. That's what I said after that. Like the next time it won't be like, no, I'm gonna wait till I fix this or I'm gonna wait till maybe I just need to work on that. It's like, no, if that's what I want, then that's what I'm gonna do. And I'll work on it together and not apart. Cause you take, and the reason why he got that affirmation is because it was like, I knew he would always be there. Like in my mind, like I could call him or something bad happened. He'll call me or I just want to be around him. We could be together tomorrow. It was always like, you're going to be here. Like, 
for somebody to be 40 something years old, they don't always, I'm like 40 years yeah. old, they don't always be here. Like, no, they're yeah. not. Like most of the people that I lost, they, they're they young compared yeah. to what people would think. Like they're not 70 or 75 or nobody's grandmother. Like, no, they're young. And it's like, wait a minute. These people may not be here. Yeah. They may not be here. So you can't just sit around thinking that, Oh, I could and just, take I could just put granted. people on the sideline and wait and do whatever and feel like they're going to always be here. They may not always be here. So right. if you don't appreciate them and the know moment. that those people that you care about them and know, let them know that you love them all the time, you may not get that opportunity. Because I know like with my dad, when he got sick, me and my sister were doing a, a back and forth. Mm-hmm. Like she was going one weekend and then I was going to go the next weekend. I never got my weekend. Like oh, wow. I never got my, the last time I seen him, it was a horrible experience. Everybody was mad and everybody was arguing and, and all of that. And it was like, okay, yeah. well you take the first weekend and my sister got her weekend. I never got mine. So it was like, you don't always get the opportunity yeah. to fix stuff or tell right. people how you really feel about them. So you can't keep just holding on to that. Like, I know now people be like, well, I ain't posting them and I ain't saying this. I'm like, no, nope, the next time I'm posting everybody. I'm- and it is what it is. And you saying that like right now, I'm like going through the most with marriage and it really makes you be like, what's, what's important? Yeah. And do you... Uh, it's so hard to tap into that because you be trying to respect the other person, <laughs> other, the other party. So I'm going to just say realizing like loves of life and being appreciative of that and making sure when you are with someone, that connection is taken serious and that it should be blissful. Like not saying that things are not going to happen. Right. Life is always going to happen. Right. But you should be sharing and cherishing those partnerships and being with people to experience life like that. Yeah. So if you're in a relationship where you feel like you need to move forward to experience, to find that type of experience, because it's out there and meet somebody like Stormy who seemed very supportive and loving. And it seemed like it could be your, it seemed like he allowed your a hundred percent authentic you. Is that? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Cause most of our relationship issues were because I couldn't, let go of doing stuff for other people mm-hmm. like I was like nope I gotta do this I gotta do that like I had that that mindset like nope they were here first so because these people my family they need me to do all of this stuff I gotta do that first yeah so the relationship stuff wasn't at the top of my list of the things I want to do he'd be like so what happens when all of those people decide to go live their life then what you gonna do Mm. Like, well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> er, you, you <laughs> I don't know. And then it happened like everybody else was happy. Everybody else was living their life the way they yeah. wanted to live their life. And it's like, well, dang, I put all y'all in front of the stuff that I wanted to do. Like yeah. it goes back to that being selfish, selfish for the right like, reasons. You gave gave and gave to everybody else so they could be happy and now it's like you get lost in the sauce like you don't know what makes you happy and the thing that makes you happy you not doing it yeah because you still worried about everybody else it's like sometimes you really have to put yourself first and say you know what I'm just gonna do the things that make me happy and if everybody else around me is upset then that's too bad oh my god you are like (laughs) speaking to my soul I'm just speaking to my soul because there's decisions that I currently have to make that's not gonna make people happy and it's gonna make me happy and it, it is what it is it's like confirmation in a sense of hearing that it's crazy because Whew. I was um so like I said I never set out to write that second book like it was because of him passing on my dad's birthday that it was it put me in a place where it was I was like 
done for. Like, I didn't know what else to do but yeah. cry and pray. So that's what came out. And then it's funny because this week I got so, like, I was telling one of my cousins, like, I feel like I'm healed. Like, I, I, nothing is bothering me. And I got so triggered this week by a whole bunch of stuff. And it's like, God, what are you doing? Like, I don't want to write another book. But <laughs> like, well, you don't have no choice, boy, when it's God's will. It's God's like, will. Want to. But then it was like, Maxie, you got to get all the rest of it out. So the mm-hmm. third book that'll be coming out in January is called I am not responsible for your tears it's it's the it's the guide to being authentically happy so it's like I'm not responsible like you're not responsible for everybody else's tears like this is your life your story and the stuff that you went through has to be put out here so that you could just be happy (laughs) I feel like you write for me. (laughs) I was just having this conversation with someone about happiness in life. And I have someone, another person in my life that feels like, what is happiness? Like, we just do this junk. And I'm like, no, 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 no. no. We're supposed to be happy. We we don't supposed to. I shouldn't be this sad about certain things. And I feel like I put in so much work in other aspects and it's like this one thing that I'm like it's one of those things that I had to tell um I told one of my friends I said I remember telling myself that doing this for other people made me happy doing that for them Mm -hmm. I, I I'm happy because I love seeing them happy right I said, but when you go around through life and all you do is give, give, give to other people to make them happy, you're not happy. You're not happy. You're not, you don't even, I said, it got to a point where I didn't even know what made me happy. Me happy. Like taking care of other people is not going to make you happy. Like Mm -hmm. you just doing what they need you to do. You compromising everything just so these people are happy is never going to make you're not ever going to be happy yeah. there's never going to be a point you're just going to wake up like I am so happy because I have to run this person around I got to pay for this for this person and do this this and this and this and I said and you, you realize like do you even know what you like yeah do you know what you like do you know what you, like if you had to get up and do one thing that you really really enjoy doing what is it it ain't gonna be and driving you, people around like, right (laughs) and paying for other people's stuff (laughs) right and doing all of this stuff and like people get so caught up like there's no such thing as people just generally being happy and I'm like I've seen people that have less than what I have that work way harder than me and they were just simply Happy. happy like they didn't have all of this other outside mess like you can be happy and it's like it, it makes me think about Stormy all the time because he was one of those people like people didn't bother him like he would just be happy like he's like I'm not dealing with that I'm like how can you just do that like, <laughs> yes I love that like, because I'm not gonna let them stress me and I be unhappy he was like I don't know why you keep doing that and I'm just like oh my god I hate you because <laughs> I want to it's like I hate I you because be, I want to be like that <laughs> I want to be like that I want to be one of them people like nope I'm not doing that yeah, that's going to that's going to that's interrupt my peace. That's going to interrupt my happiness. And it's hard to get to that place. Yes, those are boundaries. And after <laughs> reading that, after yeah. reading our last book about boundaries, I'm like, I was yeah, just like, oh, I, I ain't I people need, pleasing no more. I need all life. of those. Like, <laughs> like, you need to wake up and set every last one of them out of that book. I'm like, OK, so yeah, this I highlighted that whole I highlighted that whole book. <laughs> This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough. But practicing one boundary a day, I think, and for me, it was starting with self, setting the boundaries for myself and not looking at it as setting the boundaries for others. I was like, these are boundaries for me to be in more peace and live in my most happiest life. So I can't wait for this book because we're going to come back on here. We're going to talk about it. Uh, so there's two segments that I love to do and um, we're at least going to get the 
the ones from the tip, um, the regular episodes. It's what would the crew do? And we're going to give some advice. And then, of course, we can't leave the show without a quote of the week. So the first one is going to be what would the crew do? So hyped about this because it's usually always me giving advice. So let's get into it. What would the crew do? In this case, what would Maxie do? I want to ask you this because since you've experienced loss and everything, a lot of times people don't know what to say or what to do. Like, what do you think? people should say or people should do or how how do you feel like you've done it or what would you like recommend I I just tell people it's okay if you're not okay if you're not okay just say you're not okay and that's fine because all of the because the thing is people get tired of hearing that same old oh, they're in a better place, and oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's like, what are you sorry for? You didn't even do (laughs) it, right? Yeah. And it was funny because, um, it's not really funny, but it was a a older church lady, and I was really close to her daughter, and her daughter passed away, and the older lady at the church came up to her and was like, you know, she's not suffering anymore. She's in a better place. And she just went off like, how do you know that? You don't know that. You didn't mm-hmm. know that she didn't want to be here. You didn't know that. I'm like, uh, I'm like, yeah, she's tired. Of yeah. Say the same. Thing. <laughs> same thing. I'm like, you know, if you're not OK, it's OK for you. Not, you don't have to be OK. Yeah. Nobody's going to be OK. Some people. Yeah. Some people are irreplaceable. You're just not going to be, I'm just not going to be okay. I'm just and not. That's, and that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just have yeah. to work through that, but I, I'm i just not going to be okay. Yeah. I heard on another podcast, I was talking about grieving and she was saying, I can't remember. Well, it was probably the breakfast club, child. Was <laughs> <my> breakfast club. <laughs> and she was saying like, people will be there in the beginning, but it's the month or two after where the support is really needed because when you're when it's new and fresh it's like you don't really want to be bothered in a sense right because you don't know you're trying to process emotions but it's those months later where people not checking in people not texting and people not calling I was just like oh my god that makes so much sense and do you feel the same way like do you I I actually like um so last year I had one of my cousins that's actually in the book he passed away and then and it was sudden so it was a surprise to our family and then my uncle who had been in hospice for like two years during the whole pandemic they had gave him like six months we were all like prepared for that he passed like 30 days after him so it was back to back and it was like you could see that people was like, oh my God, like we just seen you. We just came to a funeral for y'all, but in the weeks that passed, nobody's heard from you. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? about yeah. And I just showed up to the funeral. Like we they were still trying to process that. Like I was telling my auntie, like, it's okay if you're not okay because you lost your son, then you lost your brother. And it's like, yeah. she was like, I ain't heard from none of these people. I'm like, you probably ain't. The people mm-hmm. who are going to be there are the people who are going to be there. And mm-hmm. it, it's hard because a lot of people will reevaluate the people in their life after something like that happens. Cause it's like, you go back to your regular scheduled program, mm-hmm. but my regular scheduled program, like with my uncle, it was taking him food every day to the funeral up to the nursing home every day that he was at. Cause he would refuse to eat the nursing home food. Right. So that's my regular scheduled program. I can't go back to that. Right. It's hard to go back to just the way it was. My mm-hmm. life is different now. Yeah. So it's just like, check on me, not <laughs> just when it's bad. Like, check on me after and even before, like while I'm processing and going through this. Because being the caregiver for people that are in those situations is tough too. So somebody yeah. got to be taking care of the caregiver. Let's- yeah, then check on my strong friends be so taboo, but it's like, if you're not the strong friend, you need somebody to check on you. <laughs> okay. I don't learn. Like, I'm pouring in everybody else's cup, but I need somebody to pour in my cup. 
And that's one of the reasons why like the crew is so important and how I want to grow it because I feel like it's a whole bunch of strong people coming together and checking (laughs) in on each other. So crew, you know, we cannot finish the episode without a quote of the week. And it comes from our guest author today, Maxie E. Norman. And the quote is, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. It's life. And that's okay. There is no timeline to deal with grief. And so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. We did it. We got to the end of the episode. Okay. So tell us where we can find you, find your books, and everything like that. So both of the books are available on Amazon. Or if you want signed copies, then you would have to DM me. Um, it's Maxie Norman or Elnor Maxwell on all social media platforms. So that's M-A-X-I-E-N-O-R-M-A-N. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or they're under, or you could look them up under my business name, which is Elnor Maxwell, which is E-L-N-O-R-A. M-A-X-W-E-L-L. So that's me everywhere. Do you have anything coming up locally? I know you do a lot. I see you do like (laughs) events and stuff. Um, I don't have anything right now for the summer. I don't I don't know what's gonna happen this summer. Um I do have another uh podcast to be on next month, I think it is, but I'm just kind of, you know, I'm kind of chilling this summer, I guess. Okay, well, we'll be following and waiting and definitely can't wait for the next book to come out. Thank you so much, y'all, for tuning in to the Crew Book Club podcast. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Hey! Thank you for having me, Shani. You're so welcome. I'm going to stop the recording. We can chat. (laughs) Want to be a part of the crew? Hit that follow button so you'll never miss an episode. And while you're at it, I would appreciate you showing crew love by rating the show on iTunes and Spotify. Don't keep all this goodness to yourself. Share and tell a friend so your whole crew can be growing with you. Let me be the first to tell you, welcome to the crew.